here to show you a few tips and tricks for civilization, Sid Meier's Civilization 6 for the PS4. Not PS4 specific, but some are better, easier to conceptualize via the PS4. Not a lot of content out there that I see for the PS4 version, but prove me wrong. Um, anyway, there's just a couple things I've picked up as I've been progressively getting better with the game. I only play on a Prince difficulty, but I've been working myself up from like, what, Warlord or something? I enjoy winning more than enjoy challenges, but we're working there, we're getting there. Prince is almost getting to the point where I can say I'm fairly competent in playing. Um, but I'm going to start pushing difficulty up as I journey through the YouTubes. But I feel like making this video a little bit and just pointing out some things I'm picking up in my own games that I think newer players, especially if you're getting a console version, usually hardcore PC gamers usually know this because they played many Civ games. And us console tiers had maybe Civ 2 on the PlayStation, Civilization Revolution on the PS3 and Xbox 360, and now this one to my knowledge. So... Anyway, these are a couple tips I enjoy, and they made me a better Civ player. We'll probably be switching in between games, just to point out maybe an example or two. I just started a random game in the game of Cyrus, so I'm actually going to play through this one, because I like Persia. I don't know why. It's a tiny map, I think. Small. It's four people. Whatever, it's going to be an, it's pretty kind of easy to cap off. Anyway, so this is our starting location. Um, biggest thing in Civ 6 is starting a location, starting a location, starting a location. I am not a starting location god. I do know that in Civ 6, on the computer, it's a little less known. You really gotta, like, hold your mouse to a square, but there's a little pop-up right here. You see the little white box? White box, come back. So there's a little white box, and it kind of gives certain things. It gives us our tile type, a weird name. Yep, the name. Um, movement cost, um, appeal, and continent. So continent's good to know because certain civs have certain bonuses, like Britain, for example, well, with Queen Victoria. Other continents will give her bonuses along with um, Spain. Um, appeal has to do with something in super late game with forests and stuff. Not necessary if you're starting out and trying to get better at the game, but it's there. Movement cost is a big one. So all units have a movement cost. So if I click into our warrior, we can see we have the pop-up menu. 20 melee strength, 2 movement. That two movement means that he has two movement actions he can do. Attacking, I think, take, taking a movement. So this warrior, for instance, can move two spaces. We'll hit the turn in a second. Um, like our settler, for instance. So one turn to settle, and then one turn to do what we want it to do. Actually, I like this spot here, too. Uh, we're going to do switch turns to go through. Anyway, so what I was going about movement speed is every tile costs a certain amount to get into. And on the computer, you're going to have to change into your settings and make sure this window comes a lot faster. I think it's default at like one and a half seconds, which is far too long to keep your mouse there. So it's a little harder to figure out your movement cost. But on the PS4, it pops up almost immediately and go tile by tile. So I find it being myself being much more meticulous on the PS4 rather than the PlayStation, uh, rather than the PC. So what we can do is we can see I have two movements and I'm going to click through our next turn. I'm going to hit sleep on my guy. Now, I'm assuming you played this a handful of times and just wish to get better, but this is a big one. So you see I have two movements. So you're going to see the um, bluish outline going to tell you how far you can move. Sometimes that may not be the most easiest thing to see. And I often find myself taking and extending myself out. So we can see the game will tell us how much it's going to take us for one turn. But you see how it changes to two turns? We can also see different things like... This tile is a one movement cost tile. This tile is a one movement cost tile. But this forest is a two movement cost tile. Because you have to A, get into the tile, and then forest through it. Um, so that kind of gives you a couple different things to know. Um, you can kind of plan your outing. Like, I want to go here to maybe go here, right? So it's going to be three movements. So this little box will tell you movement cost. Super important. I love it. And I love that I can be super meticulous with um, going about doing things. Another thing we want to talk about is line of sight. So units have a line of sight, usually about two units away. Um, default on most early game units. So, mail, uh, so range units have this. You can only fire within your line of sight. Forest, hills, and jungle, you cannot see over. If you're thinking about it in terms of the archer. 
So they will not be able to fire, for instance, let's say I'm here, right? You see how this is kind of grayed out right here? My warrior cannot see through this line of sight because he's trying to see through here. But if I go over here, I can kind of see through the line of sight because I can see this tile and this tile, I guess, right? So line of sight is super important so you can see, can I see something? As well as, could you fire to it? I'm going to skip another turn. We're going to be a couple turns behind. But like I said, I'm not super concerned about this game. Another thing you want to do is turn on yield icons. Yield icons are super important because they tell us, the player, what kind of tiles are going to be working. As we can see, we had desert tiles, which are dead tiles. Not good at all. So, not the best starting location. I kept it because I like the mountains here. I'm going to settle in place. So, tip and trick to settling in places. Bonus resources and strategic resources exist. Bonus resources just make the tile go better. Strategic resources can be luxury resource. Oh, there's luxury, bonus, and strategic. Luxury resources are useful because they provide amenities to your city. Petrograd. Yay. As we go into our menu here. If we go down, we see one amenity required of zero. So amenities make your cities happy. We'll go into the city status. I like these reports. So you need more amenities. Top is how many amenities you have. Bottom is the current amount of amenities, the denominator that you need. So you want to get more amenities. And one amenity I think stretches for four tiles, four cities around you. Not 100% on that. But let's say this says requires mining here. Um, if you settle on top of certain things, like strategic, and I'm pretty sure luxury resources, you'd be able to take them into your empire without needing a tech for it. So let's say there was an awesome amenity, or let's say there was like, yeah, let's say there was like stone here, right? I couldn't get the stone. Uh, let's say there was um, diamonds, and I wanted to settle here. If I settled on top of the tile, I would get the diamonds. But because I didn't, I got to wait for the proper tech. So that's a little bit of a bummer. Um, another tip I like to go through is, there's two types of people, there's the deity smashing god lords, and then there's me, everybody else probably watching this video. Um, early build order orders are super important, so you, typically you're always kind of probably, you're going to use your warrior here to scout out maybe the initial ring, initial two rings of your city, right? See what's around. Um, barbarians come through, and a barbarian camp spawns a scout. And that scout comes, walks around the map, and if it finds your city, it goes back to the camp, tells its friends, barbarians spawn and ruin your day. So you can do one of two things. You can A, let's go back into our city, you can A, get a scout, scout your location, find them and kill the barbarians. Or B, you could just start building instant defensively. We're going to build instant defensively. Not a bad strat if you already see enemies and you want to be defensive, or you're starting out and the best offense is a good defense in certain case. So it'll give you time to build up. So I typically would go for a scout, possibly into two scouts, or scout into warrior, or a scout into slinger, or two scouts into a slinger, or two scouts into a warrior, depending on my life. Um, just doing that will just give you a good basis of scouts will find things around you. So you get little tribal villages or goody huts. They give you goodies. It's like trick or treat. Um, they're good to collect and you want to pick up a lot of them. If we find one, I'll show you real quick. Um, so build order, scouts, then probably a warrior into settlers is probably going to be your best bet. Um, a rule of thumb is... Cities mean districts, districts mean yields, yields mean winning the game in the most basic form of this. So a city can, once we you know research them, um, can build districts, and districts do wondrous things. You have the merchant districts will give you money, campus districts give you science, encampment districts give you very brief amounts of production and XP to your units, and they can help by shooting things as well. Um, so you want more districts. You can only have a certain amount of districts per population level. I think it's what four or seven, four or seven, every four maybe. On um, the game will tell you. So you can only have a certain amount of cities. So if you have ten or twelve, uh, ten or twelve population, you could probably have three districts maybe. Um, so basically, you want to get as many cities as you can early. 
to get a certain amount of districts. So you want to specialize. You want to go for a science victory. You want to go for a campus, industry, and um, probably commercial. A culture victory, you want um, a campus, theater district, probably money, maybe industry. For a religious victory, I'd say a holy site maybe in the culture so you can get the right culture tech faster uh, you always want science but it's not 100 percent necessary you just need to keep up with your neighbors um science victory requires you to be passing your neighbors and you want a good industry to sign that what are my other victory types do 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 domination um you're going to want science and industry and a little bit of money um but more you're going to want ability to pump out units and fast and you got to be really good with domination um, because of the way loyalty works, as well as it's just really annoying to try to take certain cities from players, it's fine. Diplomatic victory, you just gotta be good at winning those little events. If you guess the right votes in the World Congress, you get points for it, which is a little weird. You can also vote for yourself, other players can vote against you. I haven't done too many diplo victories, I'm trying to figure out the best key, key but science, you want science, industry, science, industry, and money, culture, you want culture science and probably money and industry nomination you want money industry and science religion you want religion culture enough to get certain texts like theocracy is really good so you can run as government type into a lot i mean a lot of faith so holy site holy site holy site a little science to keep up so you don't die to wars. Um, a little bit of um, economy. Economy is super important in this game because it just makes things click faster later. The earlier you invest in something, the later something becomes. So if you get something on turn 1, producing 1, at turn 10, you'll have 10 of it. All right? But if you do something at turn 10, producing 2, turn 15, you'd have 10 of it. But you kind of see where we're going with this. You'd still have 15 at turn 15 from turn 1. So the earlier you can do things, the better money kind of helps you do that. And it helps you get units. So I'd say those are maybe certain districts you want to use with certain kinds of um, victory types. Districts are super important because they have something called adjacencies. Adjacencies are fun. So a district is inherently not good or bad, it just is. As we can see for our Acropolis, which is the theater square district for the Greeks, that's a terrible example, Zach. Let's go to campus. So campus provides science, right? So it provides a certain amount of science. It, by default, and I, it pro by default provides no science, but it gets science based on certain adjacencies. Adjacencies is if you build something around it, it will it do better? Let's go to a game. No. Yes. Options. Audio. Turn this down so I don't get copyright strike. Load a game. Let's load our YouTube game. And do we want to do this? Let's go to Germany World War. This is just an off one I have. It's pretty fun. I forgot to turn the chat on. Oh my god, bad YouTuber. But I'm totally using the live... In the beginning, I'm legends totally using of the live sword. version of my Today, PS4 to record YouTube you videos. Brink, it's so janky, it's reality. funny. With flights and new forms of so I'm just going to go into this game and just look at a couple adjacencies and I can actively build in cities. Um, this is the how base game, not with any of the expansion packs on this live. load. Uh, the expansion packs just add maybe different adjacencies or different ways to get certain adjacencies. You so you want to do that. Path. But adjacencies make your districts do the districty things. So, the more district, the more campus adjacency, the more science you'll produce, and then you can build buildings in those districts to make whatever the district does better. The same with um, commercial hubs. If you build them next to rivers, you get more money. All right, harbors. If you build them next to the city center and around resources, you get more money. So there's different things you can do as a newer player just to get basic adjacencies, and they'll just make all your games so much easier. So I'm going to teach you a couple of the ones I like to do, and then we can look at um, we can look at why this is important. Now I don't do the whole city planning, so I have a city A and city B next to each other to get adjacency on adjacency. That's not my cup of tea. Do I have a city with nothing in it? I was going for a dip, uh, domination victory in this game. Alexandria. Nice. 
Let's click Alexandria. I have one. I couldn't build a district if I wanted to. Perfect. So the PS4, it's just going to bring up the districts immediately. So holy sites, basically, for argument's sake, they're almost the same as campuses, except for the adjacency you get from woods and rainforest. But I don't count on those adjacencies when we're doing things. The things you want to look out for with campus and holy sites are mountains. The more mountains, the better. Like if we see down here, we have a mountain tile. Do I have anything in Memphis? That would be good. Yes, so here, we know this is a mountain tile. So this, putting a canvas here, because it's going to be next to the mountain tile, we'll get plus one. All right. So knowing this, we can look at previous things I did in this location here. This is what a plus four. Now this is a plus four because I have mountain tile, mountain tile, and it's next to I think mountain tile, mountain tile, mountain tile. I'm not sure if it's giving me the extra adjacency. But putting campuses and holy sites and mountain tiles will give you extra boost to my faith and or science. And the same can be applied to a couple different things. So campuses and holy sites, mountain tiles. The more mountain tiles around, build it next to it, you should have a good time there. Commercial hubs, place them next to rivers or next to your harbor, which you can do if you're on a um, dock, if you're on the ocean. I don't build a lot of harbors in my lifetime, but a nice harbor and a river next to it would go a mile. But basically, always build your commercial hubs on a river. And bonus points, if you can build districts next to districts, most districts will have an adjacency bonus for having two districts next to it. So you can plan like on a bit larger scale, if I have a campus, next to a mountain, I have a holy site next to my campus, build a commercial hub next to both of those on river, the commercial hub would get a plus one from adjacent district tiles, plus a plus two from the river tile. So basically commercial hubs on river. Um, I don't worry if there's no adjacencies with entertainment complex, so you do not have to worry about that, you just build it. Theater square, this is one you have to build yourself unless you have wonders next to it, which you get an adjacency for. The more districts around the theater square, the better. That just makes um, more culture for itself. Aqueduct place it next to a river. Good aqueduct placements here, and that I liked doing with the uh, Germans was... So this is my main city, Berlin. I renamed it Berlin. So I put my aqueduct here. And where did I put my Hansa? Where did I put my Hansa? Hansa! Let me look for it. If you go into the lenses and go to Empire, you can see stuff. So, ah, I put my Hansa here. Oh, oh yeah. So, ac so industry zones work best if placed next to a aqueduct. So you kind of want to go aqueduct going into your city from a river, in industrial zone. And then that will give you plus two or three. So usually you do your aqueduct next to your city center. So if you can put your industrial zone next to your city center and aqueduct, you'll get the double adjacency and get like a plus four. And then you can put cards to double the baseline adjacency. So mount, so... I don't have a Hansa, no, industrial zone. So it's quarry adjacent, um, yep, adjacent tile here. Aqueduct. So next to an aqueduct plus two adjacent districts. Aqueduct counts as its own adjacent district. City center counts as adjacent district. So just doing those things with your districts will give you the ability just to get more, or just to get baseline adjacency bonuses that that may just not be there immediately. Now the Germans are a little busted because you can get it from commercial being next to a commercial hub and next to a resource tile which I did so I got good with my Hansa it did not get it from the uh, aqueduct but base other sieves you get an aqueduct adjacency plus a dam adjacency plus the double um, to adjust adjacent tile city to adjacent district tile adjacency so if you do that you will get 
good baseline adjacencies on your things. So let me just reiterate, campuses and holy sites, just mountain tiles. Just think mountain tiles. If you could do um, jungle tiles like I did in this game. So I have a note on one of my things because I built a holy site. I built a campus in the middle of the rainforest. No mountain tiles. But because I'm getting rainforest, 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 I'm getting uh, my adjacencies for my rainforests, and that's working for me. So I wrote a note. If I kill these rainforests, you lose those adjacencies. So I don't count on I, I don't count on bonuses in which I'm going to remove myself, like forest or rainforest. So holy sites, campus, go mountains. Um, commercial hub, put it on river. Aqueduct, put it next to your capital. Industrial zone, put that next to your capital and aqueduct. Um, theater Square, just build districts and wonders around it, and you'll get that adjacent itself. And that's really it. My other tip I wanted to give you, and I didn't know this till super recently, you see Pella over here? The little heart with the line means it's under siege. Under siege means it's not able to get supplies from surrounding areas. This is done via zone of control. A melee unit provides a zone of control around itself. Um, range units cannot do this. They may do a one in front of it, I'm not sure. Um, zone of control cannot extend across a river or water. So here, this is a landlocked, um, landlocked with a river going through it. So I put this guy here for a zone of control here and here. I put this guy for a zone of control here. It would be, it would be here and here. But since this river is here, he's not projecting his zone of control over the river. So I put this melee unit here and here to project the zone of control over here. Basically, you need two to really do it, but there's rivers you're going to need three or four. What this does is prevents enemy city from healing during siege. So if we see... Oh, I'm doing this all wrong. I have no guys. This is just an example. Hope you this is just an example. See, I got rid of it, but you see, I had them there and they're providing a little under siege thing they're dead they no longer provide it so keeping cities under siege will allow you to have your range units work it down and you just got to keep your melee units alive long enough to whittle it down once you whittle it down you can take it easily this is one of the last cities in this playthrough um i took basically took everything else over the russians the Scythians. i gotta go with or um, Arabia, but they started a war against me, and we just had our pickings with Egypt. So those are the tips I kind of wanted to give you. So to go over them, use the little box right here as the ability to see what movement costs will do your will do what with whom. So here I can. So my musketman with its two. You see how I can't really see the blue? It's not working. But what I can go in and see movement costs of one. I have movement costs of two, so I can move here. Movement cost at one, one make two. But if I go into here, my movement cost is only two, so I can only go one further. Um, this is also good to figure out your defense modifiers. Try to park yourself on a place with a higher defense modifier, so when you're attacking each other, you get plus strength in your combat ability. So you can use a little box to determine movement cost and defensiveness of terrain. Early build orders. You want to go with probably, if you're super paranoid, I would just go with an instant slinger, um, slinger, <coughs> and the scout, and use your warrior for light scouting. But I'd probably go scout warrior scout or scout scout warrior or scout warrior slinger scout, and then start settlers. Um, a good defense is going to be your best offense in the beginning. You want to probably get five cities by turn 50 or 60 if you can. A good five baseline cities. So these are cities that are going to see all your districts get plopped down. Um, as the Germans, I was able to take city states over. So I took, I think, Heldenburg was a city I built. But I was able to take Buenos Aires Candy in Arkmog as city states. So these are my. One, two, three, four. This is basically the heartland of Germany here. And these are the going to be the cities I see all my districts in. Um, the rest of them are just going to be like territorial cities. And they're going to specialize in either in commercial hubs for money or science production, uh, production or just units. 
Um, and the last thing I want to talk uh, reiterate is just the baseline adjacencies. Campus, building next to mountains. Holy site, building next to mountains. The more mountains around, the better. So basically, they add up on one. Commercial hubs, put them next to rivers. You get your plus two really easily. Um, harbors, try to get them next to your city center. You'll get an instant. You'll get instant um, adjacencies there. And if they're next to a strategic resource, like right here, if your city was right there, build your harbor there. You get one, two, and then your city center. So you have a good harbor adjacency. Uh, your industrial zones, put them next to your aqueduct and your city center. And theater squares, just build stuff around it, either wonders or districts. And then you'll get decent adjacencies without knowing all the micro-intensive stuff. Um, once you do that, I play on Prince pretty regularly, and I'm fairly competitive, and I have a lot of fun, and I win. Um, and the last thing is get cities under siege. It's not under siege anymore, but you saw it was under siege. And keeping them under siege prevents them from being healed. And that's kind of what we did down here. We just let the... Um, we let our skies rain with our arrows down on Mecca, and then we are able to just walk our knight in. So putting them under siege, basic tile adjacency, using the little pop-up to give you all the information you need, um, a good starting baseline, and baseline of cities, and a good starting build. And from there, you should be able to fare better in your games with a couple more cities under your belt, defensive terrain, districts that actually do things for you and from there you should be able to fine-tune strategies and have a lot of fun with Civ 6. Um, both tips can work on the PS4 or a computer. For the computer you're just gonna have to make this delay come up almost immediately. I think I have mine set for 0.2 or 0.4 so it's immediate so when it pops up before I think the base game is literally one and a half seconds. So it takes forever and I never knew it popped up. I didn't know it was a thing. So yeah, take these tips and tricks. Do them as you will. Um, if you liked the video and want to see more on this stuff, like, comment, and subscribe. Um, we're doing a Let's Play with Eleanor of Aquitaine. It's one of the playlists in the um, playlist tabs. Trying for a cultural victory. Trying to do the um, core to love. So give those a view. And I appreciate everybody watching. And I will see you guys in the next 